Hi and welcome to the third in the series of tutorial videos about using the IFM condition monitoring software VES CB04. Um, now that we have shown you how to make a connection to a VSE module, how to create a parameter set and load that into the VSE module, um, we now need to start thinking about uh, making some analysis of the parameters being monitored on the machine and try to find out um, what, if anything, is actually wrong. So, um, where we've got to is sending the parameter set via that button there, right parameters to device. Um, so, these other icons here are just about creating projects and saving them and connecting, which we've done. So, we've written a parameter to the device. If we were connecting to a VSE module and we wanted to, to look at what was actually in there, we would connect, then click read parameter from the device and that would then put what's inside the VSE module down here. Um, some of the other icons along the top here, we can compare what's in the machine to actually what's locally on our PC. So if we maybe made some software changes to the parameter set but hadn't loaded them in, if we click that, it would allow us to compare physically what's on the PC with compared to what's in the device. We're able to reboot the device from up here, perform a self-test. So if I have sensor one and click execute, that's executing the self-test up there. It says it's okay, so we can close that down. Um, so we have the ability to look at um, data monitoring. So this is showing us, um, the first one here we'll look at is the, the bar graphs. So this is object monitoring. So this is the parameter names that we gave everything when we created the set. And for each of these, we have a green, a yellow, and a red section. So where our warning and our damage alarms were set. And what the, the blue bars is where the current level is for that particular parameter. So we can see here, the, this is the upper limit monitor, this is the temperature, it's going into yellow alarm. And the unbalance is almost at the, the red alarm. Because of the unbalance being high, the RMS velocity always goes up along with that as well. And we have some activity, but not much at the 2 to 4 times and the 2 to 10 times. We're looking for some misalignment here or um, rotative looseness for the 2 to 10 times. So within each view, when we're looking at information, we have these tabs to the left and the right. Um, the one on the left generally shows you what parameters you can tick to view. So um, I have just the one sensor in, but this is all the parameters. Um, but you, know, you can untick one and tick it to, to bring it back. And on this particular one, there won't be much at the right here, um, other than you know how, how you view it. But look, there's a bit more data when we look at some of the other um, views at the top here. So this is the most common one, the bar graph view. And um, we're obviously able to look at it as a table. So we have the names of the objects, the current value for each of them and the, the green, yellow, red status as well. Um, the next one along is this switch to moving window. So this is the, the levels being monitored. Now the system I have is just a little desk fan. So there, there's not really a great deal of difference in the, the levels being monitored. On a normal machine, these levels would be fluctuating up and down. But you can see it's starting to, to grab those. Now that this one, um, third from the left, moving data window view, once it starts to get to the end of the screen, it just pushes them straight off and what you see is what fits in this window here. Um, but the other one along to the right, unlimited data view, this kind of puts a, a block on the left axis and nothing gets past it. And as you'll see, it start to gather more information. The, the time values get a bit more compressed together and everything just fits onto the screen. Any of these views that are in the uh, open monitoring window view, these four here, we have the ability to, over here, start a data recording. So this is now recording what's happening on the screen. If I save that, it puts it into my data tree here and that can be played back. And if you make it in any of, any of these four, you can then play it back in any of the, the other three um, that you choose. So the next one along from monitoring window is 
counters, so any counters we have set up, it gives us an overview of those, um, what the inputs and outputs we have are all doing as well. Um, the next one along is to look at the frequency spectrum. So this is now looking at a live uh, frequency spectrum of the machine that, that we've got, which is the, the small desk fan. Um, you have some options here to change how you view, so you can change the resolution, what frequency range you want to look between, whether it's FFT or HFFT's enveloping, and whether you're looking in millimetres, millimetres a second or millimetres. So I'm looking millimetres a second, FFT, and I have my live spectrum here. So again, this tab on the left lets me see I only have one sensor, so it's the only one that can be ticked. And over to the right here lets me see, if I click on the, the axis, things like scaling as well, I can change. So but now I've highlighted this axis. This rectangle at the top allows me to show more information actually on the screen here. So if I right click it, if there was a bit, it's very neat, this spectrum, but if it was quite messy, if I wanted to take on peak finder and just anywhere near a peak, if I click, it then just finds it and tells me um, where we are. So if I just untick that, we also have the ability to put in harmonics. So when we find a peak, click on it, and it then puts in the harmonics of that particular frequency. And if I want to, I'm just now left clicking, dragging the mouse down. I can then zoom in, so I get a bit more of a detailed view. And again, if you want to do that again, you can zoom in even further, and you can see that the parameters that we've set, we're picking up activity at one times, two times, and three times the rotational speed of the machine. And just to get back, you just right click, undo zoom. And if I just untick harmonics, there you go. The other thing you can show as well is the sub object. So this puts in where all the parameters are that we're actually monitoring on the machine. So we set one to 10 times across various objects. And this is now just marking on the spectrum where those um, frequencies are, um, depending on obviously the, the rotational speed of the machine at this moment in time. So we can just make that disappear. And again, if we want, we can just start a data recording. This is now recording the spectrum live. And once we've gathered enough information, we just stop it and then it puts it into our data tree here. Okay. Um, the next one along is the time waveform, so open raw data monitoring window it's called. Tick on that and that's now generating a live time waveform from the, the small fan demo that I'm working on. So if we want we can again zoom in and undo zoom. Um, if I just highlight the axis, the right one here gives us our scaling options and the left one here, if we had different sensors, we could show which one we want to monitor. If we want to make a recording for this, that's now taking the live information. And once we'd got enough information, we were able to then just click stop. And once we save it, that now puts it over here as well. Um, one nice feature with this is rather than having to make a recording of the spectrum and the time waveform, if we just make the time waveform, if we right click on it here and click spectrum, what the software does is actually generates the, and we can play it, it generates the frequency spectrum that um, that time waveform uh, relates to. And again, if we want here, we have the ability to put all our sub objects and everything. Else so it just saves um, making more than one recording. So that's um, shown you various ways to view the data uh, live. The, the last thing here is the history. So if I just click on the history, that's now uploading it from the VSE module. And we are able to then show everything we want here. So we've got lots of options. Um, we can delete things this way if we want to, or we can remove them from, from here or add them from here as well. So, you see the, the less you have, the, the better it looks as well. So, and again, we have the ability to zoom in 
and look at history trends as well. So that's, um, you should now, after the three tutorial videos, be able to make connections to the modules, create parameter sets, and have a, a rough starting idea about how to um, view some of the data slightly more complex as well. Thank you very much for your time.